So, the previous lesson, the review of exponents, I called 7.0 because it wasn't officially a lesson. Now we're kind of back to the textbook. And what we're going to look at are exponential functions. What's an exponential function? It's an equation that looks something like this. Y equals, guys with me? Leave a small space, b to the power of x, where b is a number, where in fact, where b is the base, which is why we use the letter b there. An exponential function is an equation where the x is sitting where? As an exponent, OK? Hey, we named it right. An exponential function is an equation where x is an exponent. However, you might have a coefficient. So you put a little a there. There could usually, I prefer it when there's a little visible 1 there. Guys? But you might have a number. So graph the following exponential functions and then determine its characteristics. So let's graph it. Let's go to our graph menu. For me, it's menu 5. Delete anything that you have there. And to type 3 to the x, I would go 3. Where is my exponent button? Remember, it's this little thing right here and right next to the exit button to the power of. And again, remember, your x button is below the alpha button right there. Do not use this for your x button. That's going to change things dramatically to the x. Enter. Um, I want to pick a good view window. I always start out with the standard view window. So if you hit F3, oh, hang on. If you hit Shift F3, Shift view window, I want the standard view window. What was the standard view window? But which of, what is, how do I write standard? What's the abbreviation? Yeah, not what you tell, what you think it stands for. So F3, there's my standard view window. And it turns out that this graph looks like that. Looks like that. Okay. And we can find some points on here. We can find it two ways. We can find it using our graphing calculator, but I'm going to go old school. We're going to find some points using a table of values. We're going to go x. We're going to go y. And my usual points that I try are negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Those are my, I start there, and then I try and figure out what's going on. So my equation is y equals 3 to the x. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So if I want to figure out the y value, the y value is going to be 3 to the third, because that's what x is. What's 3 to the third? What's 3 times 3 times 3? 27. That's not going to fit on my graph. In other words, 3 comma 27, it'd be way up here somewhere. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that one. Uh, what about when I plug in a 2 for x? So instead of y to the third, sorry, y times uh, 3 to the third, I would have 3 to the second. When x is 2, what's y? OK, that might fit on my graph. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, well, 9 right there. Let's try when x is 1. What's 3 to the 1? Just plain old 3. So this graph is going to go through 1, 3. What about when x is 0? Anything to the 0 is 1. It's going to go through 0, 1. What about when x is negative 1? Ooh, I have a negative exponent. Put it on the elevator. That's the same as what? Where will this 3 to the negative 1 move? 
people. Where will this three to the negative one move? To the bottom and become positive. Can I just know, what do I have to put on the top there? I guess negative one is going to be one third high. I'll eyeball it. When x is negative one, we're kind of like that. Now take a look at the dots that we have so far. Is that resembling that shape there? If I connect them. It looks like what happens is I shoot up pretty quick as I go to the right. We shoot off to infinity. Now as I go to the left, what if I tried a negative 2? I'd have 3 to the negative 2 or 1 over 3 squared, 1 ninth. If I put a 3 in there, I'd have 127. As I go to the left, I get smaller and 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 smaller fractions. I never get to 0, so it's going to look kind of like it gets closer and closer and closer, but it never quite touches. It gets closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. But even when you're at like negative a million, 3 to the negative a million isn't 0. It's like 0, 0 0.00 with probably a whole bunch of zero, but not quite zero yet. Is that okay? So, I'm going to tell you that every exponential graph looks something like this. If I see a graph, don't write this down, if I see a graph that's doing this, I'm pretty sure that's an exponential graph. If I notice it's getting closer to zero as it goes to the left, and it's getting steeper as it goes to the right, and it's shooting off to infinity, that's probably y equals some number to the power of x. How many x-intercepts are there? It's a trick question. None. It gets really close. None. How many y-intercepts are there. What is the y-intercept? What comma what? Put your pencils down, look up. What if instead of 3 to the x, what if the equation was 4 to the x? What's the y-intercept? Put a 0 in, what do you get? 0 comma 1 again. Oh, what if it was 14 to the x? 1. What if it was 141 to the x? Oh, it looks like every single exponential graph, anytime the x is an exponent, what's the y-intercept always going to be? When you put a 0 in for the x, z any power, any number to the 0 power is always what? So that's going to be a helpful point for us to always trigger on. End behavior, what quadrant do we start with? Quadrant 2. What quadrant do we leave on? Quadrant 1. What's the domain? How far left does this graph go? Forever. How far right? Now, it is getting steeper and steeper, but it is still moving sideways. So you know how far right it goes? Infinity. The domain. All reals. What about the range? How high does it go? Infinity. How low does it go? What height does it get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to? Zero high. Does that ever touch zero high? So we're going to say the range is everything above Zero, but not touching. Okay. If we look at our graph that we have here, if you go G solve, okay, if you try hitting the root button, it's going to give you an error. Saying, there is no root, no, no x-intercept. If I go G solve F5, max and min won't work either because there is no maximum minimum. Uh, y intercept will say, okay, I'll go through 0, comma 1. And 
I think I can also... Where's my... Oh. Another thing you can do is if instead of going G solve, if you go F1, that lets you do what's called tracing the graph. What that means, I think, is if you type in 1 for x, it gives you the y value. What's the y value? 3. If you type in 2 for x, y value is 9, which is what we have on our chart, so we're good. Okay? B. How is the equation, how is the equation for B the same as the equation for A, and how is it different? How is the equation for B the same as the equation for A, and how is it different? What's the base on the exponent in equation A? 3. What's the base on the exponent in equation B? 3. Ah, but this time there's a coefficient. By the way, technically there's a coefficient right there. What number is sitting right there? It's invisible. 1. What number is sitting right here? 2. OK. Let's look at what this does. So let's go exit, type 2 times 3 to the power of x. What's that going to look like? And then hit draw again. Mr. Duick, it looks the same. Well, the shape looks the same. Let's check out some of the points. So let's hit trace. Hey, trace is F1. Yeah, but you can put that away still. When x is 0, what's y this time? Ah, it goes through 0, 2. When x is 1, I just hit the number 1, enter. What's the y value? You got, the, you got this okay? Okay, then you need to ask. This, so you know how, did, you got the graph okay though or not? Yes? So you hit trace, which is F1. Okay, and then you just literally type the number. So if I type in, I hit the 1 on my calculator and hit equals or execute, it's saying it goes through 1 comma 6. Is that working or no? Yeah, okay. What did 1 go with on the previous graph? 1 comma what? This goes through 1 comma? How is that related to the previous answer? Times it by 2. Why might it be times by 2? Look at the equation. Where might that times by 2 be coming from, do you think, Christina? The coefficient. In fact, what did I say the coefficient was in the previous one? It was invisible? Technically, we were timesing by 1, but does timesing by 1 make any difference? No, so we ignored it. Uh, 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 oh, so can you make a prediction what will x equals 2 give us? What did x equals 2 give us on the previous graph? 9. What did it give us here? 18. Let's find out. 2, 18. x equals 3 on the previous graph. Graph gave us 27, which was way off the screen. I bet you x equals 3 is going to give us twice as big as 27. What's twice as big as 27? 54. Ah, there it is. OK, so in terms of a sketch, the sketch looks the same, except it just goes way steeper, way faster. And I can only really fit one point on this graph. I can fit the 0, comma 2. Well, what about the uh, negative 1? That gave us 1 third last time gives us two-thirds. That's two-thirds as, as a decimal. So OK. But you know what? I'm interested in the intercept and the shape. You guys OK? So how many x-intercepts? Again, none. 
What's the y-intercept? In fact, look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. I think the y-intercept is always going to be 0, comma, a, whatever the coefficient is. If there's nothing there, it's a 1. 0 comma 2. If there was a 5 there, I can tell you the y-intercept would be 0 comma 5. If there was a j there, the y-intercept would be 0 comma j, whatever the heck that is. End behavior still starts on quadrant 2, goes to quadrant 1. Domain is still all reals. Range is still everything above 0. That hasn't changed. The shape hasn't changed. Only a few of the key points have. That's an exponential graph. An exponential graph looks like that. Justin, an exponential graph looks like, hold your right hand up like this, hold your left hand out like that, move your left hand forward a little bit, move it back without lifting it up. OK. So, Justin, you're going to be my exponent. Curve your right hand up a little bit more, but not like that. Straight, OK? Every single exponential graph looks like that. See, Justin? It's going to look like that, OK? It's sort of like a nice morning stretch almost, OK? Don't, don't straighten it out. It, it curves up and steep, OK? Don't bend back. Look at your right hand. Don't bend back. Look at your right hand. Yeah, like that. Got it? Yeah. Little mime there. Turn the page. Ooh. What's the difference between C and the previous ones? What type of a base do we have this time? Folks, I got a lot of chatter. Can it please end? I'm yelling, it seems. What's the difference between this base and the previous two? What type of number is this base? It's a fraction. OK, less than 1. What does a fraction base look like? Let's try that. So let's go uh, exit, uh, menu, graph, exit to get out of here, delete, bracket, one, fraction button, two. Remember the fraction button is right below the X button. Close bracket to the power of X. What's that one look like? Same shape different. Instead of starting shallow and getting steeper, it starts steep and shallows out. Which actually, I guess, sort of, kind of makes a little bit of sense. A one half as, an, as a fraction, it gets smaller. In fact, if we wanted to, we could make a table of values. You know what? Let's use our trace button. Let's try some points. What about when x is negative 4, how high are we? When you put in a negative 4, using the trace feature that all of you are doing with me, and you're all typing in that negative 4, and then you're hitting Enter, what you need to know how to do this. What value are you getting back? Will that fit on my graph? No. Let's try uh, negative 3. When x is negative 3, how high are we? Hey, that'll fit. Negative 3, comma 8, you know what? Negative 3, comma 8, that's on my graph. What about negative 2? Really, guys? With me? Focus here? I'm picking x values that are nice, that'll fit. I'm trying numbers between negative 8 and positive 8 because that's what I have on my x-axis. But I already know that negative 8, negative 6, negative 7 are going to be way too big. I generally, what I said is I try stuff between negative 3 and positive 3. But because this was a fraction and I noticed that it was positive over on this, see that, you know, I noticed that it was positive over here, I started trying negative numbers first. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, try negative 2. Negative 2 goes with what? 4? 
What about negative 1? Goes with 2. What about 0? 1. What about 1? A half high. What about 2? I think a quarter high. An eighth. You know what? Looks like that. Very similar to the other exponential, except instead of going this way, it's going this way. Justin, can you show me an exponential graph with your arms? Okay. Now, it turns out I lied. Every exponential graph either, look up, look up. Every exponential graph either looks like this or like this. Okay. Or like this. Like this or like this. Now, you are allowed to hit your neighbors when you're doing this with me. Are you ready? Here we go. Yeah. Every exponential graph looks like this or like this, like this or like this. Slide back a little bit. Every exponential graph looks like this, like this, like this. Okay? You're going to be the one I keep coming to for the rest of this unit. I'm not going to give them any warning. I'm going to say, Justin, what does every exponential graph look like? Justin, what does every exponential graph look like? Like that or like that. It's going to be up to them to flinch. Okay? With me? Okay? Justin's going to be our role model. I've never been a role model before. Well, it's the first time for everything. How many x-intercepts? How many x-intercepts? None. What's the y-intercept? 0, 1, because sitting in front right there is an invisible 1. End behavior still goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. I think the domain is still all reals. Psst. The range is how high? Infinity, this time starting on the left-hand side, but it does hit infinity. How low? Gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. Never quite touches. So the range is still. In fact, you may notice that this chart for example C is completely the same as the chart for example 1. Okay? What changes things is if you have a coefficient. And if you have a fraction, it starts out steep and gets shallower. If your base is a number bigger than 1, it starts out shallow and gets steeper. Justin, every exponential graph looks like what or what? Or, there you go. Okay. Hey, let's see if we can fill in the chart before the graph for D. First of all, what's my base? Is it bigger than 1 or is it a fraction? So it's going to look kind of like, don't draw that yet. It's going to look kind of like that, but I can be a little more specific. How many x-intercepts will there be? None. Look at the equation. Can you tell me what the y-intercept is going to be? 0, comma. Let's put that on our graph because that fits. And now that I have that, that's really the key point. I know this graph is going to go through 0, comma, 3, and it's going to do that. Yeah. You notice I didn't use a graphing calculator. I just memorized the shape. Because every single exponential graph looks like what, Justin? Or? Yep. What's the end behavior? Start at what quadrant, leave what quadrant? Domain, all reals. Range, everything above zero. Turn the page. What do you think this graph, if I didn't give you a graphing calculator, and I gave you two pictures to choose from, I said you could choose from picture A or picture B. Which of those two graphs, A or B, does this one look like? And how do you know? Okay. 
Now, we have a fancy name for this. When there's a fractional base, we call this a decay function. We call the other ones growth functions. It's exponential growth and exponential decay. Talking about that next lesson. So you know what? I can tell you that this graph has no x-intercepts. The y-intercept is 0, comma, don't say 1 third. It's not 0, comma, 1 third. What's the y-intercept? 0, comma, the number in front there, invisible 1. End behavior? Domain, range. It goes through 0, comma, 1. You know what? As a shape, looks like that. I could graph some points. I'm less interested about specific points. I'm much more interested in the shape. If I need specific points, I'll type it in, use the trace function, and I can find whatever points you want me to find. D, is that graph going to start out shallow and get steeper, or is that graph going to come in steeper and get shallower? Justin, what does every single exponential graph look like? What will this, which of those two, which one will this look like? As it goes, to, yes, as it goes to the right, it's going to go, oh, by the way, what's the y-intercept going to be here? Ah, it's going to go right through here. It's going to look like that. This one I can be a bit more specific. I think it goes through 1 comma 2, because 2 to the 1 is 2. Probably goes through 2 comma 4, 3 comma 8. I could, but I'm sketching right now. I'm not being that fussy. Uh, number of x-intercepts, none. Y-intercept, end behavior, domain, range. So, as a summary, all exponential functions that look like this, y equals some coefficient times the base to the x power, All exponential functions that look like this. OK, but now i got to be fussy. I've lied to you. I've picked very careful examples. There are some restrictions. First of all, the base itself can't be negative. So I'm going to make a little note here where b has to be bigger than 0. Can't be negative. Has to be positive. By the way, if you try uh, exit graph. If you go, uh, geez, delete, yes, bracket, negative 2 to the power of x, it has weird, this is wrong, it has weird gaps, it goes all haywire. So the negative base, it no longer follows the pattern properly. Oh, what else? A can't be 0. Because if I put a 0 in front of everything, what's 0 times anything? Just 0, that wouldn't give you any exponential curve. I should mention that. For what it's worth, please don't assume A can be anything. A can be anything else. In fact, we're going to say one more thing. For our journey, we're going to make A be positive as well. So our restrictions are both of those numbers, for now, are going to be positive. The base will always be positive. What will they all look like? They will have no x-intercepts. The y-intercept will be 0, comma, whatever number is sitting where the a is. Right? What's the end behavior from what to what? What's the domain? What's the range? There's one more restriction I have to add. There's one number that acts weird with exponent laws, and it's the number 1. What's 1 to the second power? 
What's one squared? What's one cubed? What's one to the fourth? What's one to the millionth? What's one to the trillionth? That won't give you that curve either. So right here, also we have to say, by the way, the base can't be one. And I'm being really nitpicky. This is Brooke as a math nerd saying, I, I am fibbing to you a bit. Justin, what does every single exponential graph look? Stop. Only if B isn't one, if B is positive, and if A isn't zero and A is positive, then every single exponential graph looks like that or like that. You're not really going to have to remember those obscure conditions, but Emma, as a math nerd, I, I, have, I don't feel right if I don't point that out, that I fibbed a bit. Is that okay? There are two different shapes of an exponential function that looks like this. Case one is what we call exponential growth. And that's the first one I showed, Justin. And that's when b is bigger than 1, or to put it in English, b is not a fraction. The second case is, looks like that. This is exponential decay. And that's when b is a fraction. Well, that's a lot of writing. In math, we would say this. That's when 0 less than b less. We would say that's when b is between 0 and 1. If it's between 0 and 1, it must be a fraction. By the way, fraction or a decimal, like 0.4, because 0.4 is a fraction. It's 4 over 10 or something like that, right? So, where do we apply some of this? All over the place. Almost anything as a population that grows or decays follows an exponential curve. There are all sorts of neat applications. Radioactivity, population growth, disease spread, food pop, all sorts of stuff. So here's a basic one. Connor is a research scientist, Connor, who is studying bacteria and he wanted to find the growth rate so he isolated three cells, and he noticed the following pattern. After one hour, there were six cells. After two hours, there were 12 cells. After three hours, there were 24 cells. How many cells after four hours spot the pattern? 48. What's happening each time? Every hour, the cells are doing what? You know what? Let's do a little chart here. Let's go um, n for number, or sorry. T for time and N for number of cells. And so we noticed uh, at time zero, there was three cells. We started out with three cells. After one hour, there was six. After two hours, there was 12. After three hours, there was 24. After four hours, what? 48. After five hours, uh, 96. After, okay, I, I, you know, I've spotted the pattern. So I said, Using n for the number of cells and t for the growth time in hours, write an exponential equation that can predict this. I'm going to give you a hint. The t is going to be an exponent. And I always pause because I'm always curious. Every once in a while, I have a kid that figures this out. Can you come up with an equation so that when I put a 0 in, I get 3 for an answer? When I put a 1 in, it gives me 6. When I put a 2 in, it gives me 12. When I put a 3 in, the answer is 24. When I put a 4 in, the answer is 48. If I give you the hint that the t is an exponent. So let's see if we can reason our way there. Look at the chart. What's the y-intercept? Looking at my chart, looking at my table, what's the y-intercept? 0, 3. That tells me A. That tells me there must be a 3 in the front. 
right? We're working in the we're working back, right? Yes. <coughs> What's the base? What? Two. Tiffany said, Mr. Duick, what if you put it to the by the way, what did you say the pattern was where did you use the word doubling? Can you see where the two might have come from? Now let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. You ready, ready, ready? We're gonna do some math on our heads. Let's put a one right there. What's two to the one? Two times three does give me six. Let's put a zero right there. What's two to the zero? Zero, uh, not zero. One times three does give me three. Hey, let's try three. What's two to the third? That's two times two times two, which is eight times three. Do, you know what? There's the equation. This is the equation that explains if Connor was doing research and he was trying to then model this growth of this bacteria and make predictions in terms of disease spread, here it is, three times two to the T. So Connor, how many cells will there be after seven hours? N equals three times two. You can go right to your uh, run menu. What is three times two to the seventh power? How many cells will there be after seven hours? Sorry? 384. 384. OK. C. Next page. Next page. Next page. After nine hours, there are 1,536 cells. How many hours elapsed in order to have half that amount? So after nine hours, I have 1,536 cells. How many hours elapsed in order to have half that amount? Guys with me? Let me read it one more time, and this time you can look up instead of looking at each other. After nine hours, there are 1,536 cells. How many hours elapsed in order to have half that amount? What? Kayvon, speak to me, my friend. What? You're right. Eight. Why? Because every hour, they are what? So you must have had half as many only one hour ago. What do a lot of people say? 4.5. They have a bad understanding of exponential growth. D, how many hours are needed until there are more than 200,000 cells? This would be the research question that Connor might be asking. Maybe this is a cancer cell or something like that, and you want to figure out how fast this tumor is going to metastasize or grow. So you'd like to know, OK, how many hours until there's 200,000 cells? Now we need to use our graphing calculators. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our graph menu, delete whatever we have here, OK? We're going to type our equation in, except instead of n and t, we have to use x and y. We're going to type 3 bracket 2 to the power of x. There's our first step, OK? However, we're going to have to change our view windows a bit. How many cells are we talking about in D? And 200,000 cells, that's actually the y value, because in my original equation, there was an n there. Yes? So can you all of you with me, you all typed it in? We're going to go shift view window, we need to do our y max to 200,000. In fact, you know what? I want to go a little higher than that. I'm going to go to 220,000. That has to fit on my graph. Problem. I don't know if 10 hours is going to be enough to fit it on. How many hours do you think you'll need until there's 200,000 cells? Think 20? I have no idea. 20 is a good guess. So I'm going to change my x max to 20. 
Probably what? Oh, change our scale. Yeah, you know what? I'd probably go up by fives along the x-axis. And my y scale, I'd probably go up by 50,000s or something. Honestly, you can survive without changing the scale. It just unclutters your graph quite a bit. Let's try that. So, and again, how did I get these numbers? Kyla, I'm guessing, but I'm guessing intelligently. I'm saying, you know what? I have to fit 200,000 cell. cells is the Y value because that's N. I better make sure my Y max is bigger than 200,000. I said 220,000. Uh, X is how many hours? I don't think 10 hours is enough. My X max was 10. Jordan said, let's try 20. Could be. Let's find out. Draw. I don't know. Let's see. How can I figure out how many hours? Hours is an x value. They've given me a y value. My calculator, if I give it a y value, can find the x value. How? G solve, arrow sideways. I want an x calculation if I give it a y value. So I'm going to give it a y value of 200,000, and it turns out six, just after 16 hours. Ah, good point. Did you hear Foster? He says, Mr. Duick, it says more than 200,000 cells. So you should technically need more than 16 hours. Uh, you're right. I'm going to say then uh, T 16 hours. Uh, how about T equals between 16 hours? It's going to happen sometime in, the, in that hour stretch there. And in fact, looking at my decimal value, just after 16 hours. So there's one application in medical research. You could use this to make predictions if this is a type of cancer, if this is a bacteria, if this is a type of mold. Is that okay? This is an example of an, is this a growth function or a decay function? Look at the picture, look at the graph. Sorry? Growth, circle, growth. What was the starting population? Do you remember? Three. Three, our A value. What was the growth rate? Two, doubling. And so now I'm trying to put that B base in context, that, that context that's actually the rate of growth. Jordan. Buy you a Beamer. What? Let's buy you a Beamer. All right. Jordan buys a BMW and he pays $65,610. After one year, because cars depreciate very dramatically, he sees that the blue book, blue book value is now $21,870. After two years, it's worth $7,290. Write an equation that relates worth to time. I'm going to give you a hint. Time is an exponent. Suggestion? What's the starting value? Ellen, what's the starting value? That's our A. What factor are we going down by? Try dividing that number by that number. Three, but we're not multiplying by three. We're dividing by three. You know what? Dividing by three, same as timesing by a third. There's our equation. So what's the growth rate? One third. You're losing two-thirds of your value every year. You're keeping one-third of your value every year, which is about what a car does, depressingly. 
go that divided by that, you get three. But you divided, you didn't times. So, oh, timesing by one third, that's the same as dividing by three. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah? Jordan, when does your BMW become worth less than a buck? Let's find out. Let's go to our graphing calculator. Let's delete what we have here. And let's type in 65,610 times 1 fraction 3, close bracket, to the x. And again, remember, Cole, I have to use x and y on my graphing calculator. I like using letters on my, in my work because to me, w, worth, I can remember that. t, time, I can remember that instead of y and x. Um, yeah. What's x time? Actually, what's the smallest amount of time we could have, physics people? What's the smallest amount of time that we're going to have? What does time start with? Zero. Let's go x min, zero. x max, how many years? You know what? I'll guess 20. I think that's way too many. But I'll guess 20, and maybe I'll come back and I'll adjust the view window. Yep. Uh, y min, now that's what it's worth. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it the smallest as negative 10. It's never really going to get negative, but I'll leave that there. What's the most that the car was worth? 65,610. What's a nice round number slightly bigger than that? Because I don't want that to be the very, I wanted some space at the top. 70,000? Uh, good scale. 10,000s maybe? Let's see. Oh, Jordan. Ooh. First of all, I think 20 years is way too much. I'm going to go and change my view window, and instead of 20 years, I'm going to try 10 years and see if that looks a bit better. So do that. Change your view window. Change the X max to 10. Okay, that's a little better, maybe. How can I find when this BMW becomes worth less than a dollar? Is this an X calculation or a Y calculation? That one dollar, is that an X value or a Y value? Because I asked you to. Why? Because I asked you to. Why? Because I asked you. OK. That's a Y value, which means I want an X value. So I'm going to go G solve over X calculation. I was wrong. It doesn't get there in the first 10 years. I thought the graph got to one high, but I guess not. It still hasn't got there. I need to change my view window. Maybe it takes 20 years. Maybe, maybe your car isn't worth, well, your car isn't worthless after 10 years. It's still worth something. Let's try 20 years. G solve, $1. Ah, you know what? Just after 10 years, it becomes worth a buck. <laughs> worth less than a buck. In year 10. That's a better answer, right? Sometime during year 10. Uh, what will this car be worth after five years? Five years, is that an X value or is that a Y value? Roy, that's an X value, so I'm going to use the Y calc feature. G solve, arrow sideways, do a Y calculation. In five years, the car is going to be worth $270. Now, in real life, car decay isn't quite that smooth. There's other factors that affect it, the condition of the car, if it's been in any accidents. So I'm simplifying the case, but it is depressing how quickly cars lose their value. 
I have a 2010 Santa Fe, my first ever brand new car, my last ever brand new car. I wanted to buy at least one in my life. And I think right now it's worth about a fifth of what I paid for it. And we're 2014. Cars depreciate. They're terrible investments. Um, hey, this is an example of exponential growth or decay. This is decay. With a starting population of 65,610 and a growth rate of a decay rate of one third. What's your homework? Not very much. From the textbook, do page 439, number one, two, and then three B and D. You'll finish it in class easy.